Hello everyone and welcome back to the 6th episode of the Lua build series. I hope you're all well and staying safe. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to build a digital throttle here in Stormworks. I'll go through all the components along with the logic and finally we'll actually test it out here in the world of Stormworks. But before we get started, if you're enjoying these videos, comment below and let else you'd like to see any of my future videos. While you're there, don't forget that like and subscribe button and make a little bell icon to be notified for my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So with all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. So getting started with this video, we're back here at the Creative Island and I've actually already built up an example just to give you an expectation of what we'll be doing in this video. Now you can see I've got a simple Lua block and a 2x2 screen and a dial here which is actually my throttle. Now the whole point of this is that we can go onto the screen and we can simply click wherever we want to and it's going to change the dial for us which is our throttle. So we can see here, if we bring it all the way down to the bottom, we have 0% throttle. If we bring it all the way to the top, we have 100% throttle. Now we're going to learn how to build this. It's actually relatively simple. It's not that hard. And the whole point of this is this is a much easier solution, I think, or much cleaner solution than to use the on or throttle that we have built in the game, uh, the component block. This gives us a lot more opportunities for customization, and setting up a, little, a couple different things. Now, another nice thing is that you'll see that as we change this, it changes the number, and it actually maximum is 100%, and the lowest it can go is 0%. And the nice thing too is that if I click anywhere else on the screen, it doesn't change anything, it doesn't do anything. Unless I click on the actual throttle, then it goes and changes. Now, you could add like 10 of these onto the screen. You could have one, you could have 20. It's up to you. And that's what I like about this is you can fit this into much smaller spaces and have much more throttles than what you would normally have with a normal two, one by two throttle block that we have in game. So let's go and learn how to build this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return this into the workbench. I'm going to delete the Lua block and the actual microprocessor that we have already. Now, you need, of course, a battery, you'll need a screen, you'll need a dial here, which I'm using to show my actual throttle, and I'll just need a simple on that's gonna go and turn my screen on. Pretty simple, okay? Of course, you could do this on any size screen. I'm just gonna use a two by two because it's the most common screen that everyone uses in their creations. So the first thing I wanna do is actually build the microprocessor. So to do that, we're gonna click on that and we're gonna go into a brand new one. So we're gonna go to the properties, let's call this our on-screen throttle. We're going to keep it by two by two. We can go to our logic and you'll actually only need three nodes. The first node we're going to need is of course our composite that's coming from our touchscreen. We're also going to need to output our video coming from our composite here. And also we'll need a simple way of outputting our number, which is going to be our actual throttle. So we're going to set that to an output. We can now go into the logic and we'll start very simply just so we're getting the foundation set. The foundation of course is going to be the line and the little button that's gonna be moving on our screen. So we'll start off with that. That's actually relatively not hard. We'll simply get a Lua script, place that down. We're gonna go from our touch screen into our Lua script and then from our Lua script out to video. Okay, very simple so far. We can go into our Lua script and you'll notice we have our basic stuff that's in here by default. We can actually get rid of a lot of the stuff. So we're gonna go and get rid of the first part and we're gonna go and get rid of the circle. Leave everything else, you obviously you can get rid of this extra text that you don't need, it's up to you. Okay, and we're gonna start with this. The first thing we want is we want a line up and down our screen and I want it to be in white. So I already have a screen set color. So I'm gonna change that to 200 by 200 by 200. That will give me a nice white line a nice white line color on my screen. We need to then draw the line. So let's go and get our line. Simple screen, draw line, copy and paste that. And now we need to decide where we want this. This is very important you decide where this is because this will obviously change a lot of other things later on when we're starting to figure out dimensions. Now I've decided that I want my, my line, let's say on the left hand side, and we're gonna do it in proportion so it's going to be 10 from the top and 10 from the bottom now i'm on a 64 by 64 screen so i can obviously do the mass there and calculate it so x and x so i want it let's say at a position of 10 so we can keep both the x's at 10 and now i can decide on the height so i'm going to do it from let's say pixel 10 all the way down to pixel 54 okay this should now give me a nice white line on my screen I'm gonna go and save this. Okay, so I'm simply gonna go call this my on-screen throttle 
and we're going to go and add this onto my creation. So I'm going to search for my on-screen throttle. Perfect. I can go and place it down and we can get it connected up. So you can see I can connect my video. I'm also going to connect my composite and I'll make sure I connect my actual throttle. We haven't connected it up yet, but we will later on. We can now spawn this in. We should have a nice white line on our screen. Perfect. So you can see it's gone 10 across. It's gone 10 from the top and 10 from the bottom. Okay, great. So this is the foundation. The next thing is we want the actual button on that little uh, dial to go up and down. Okay, as we touch the screen. So we're going to go back into our lure and we're going to add a nice little dial. So to do that, or a little button, to do that, we're going to set the color. I'm going to have a red button on my screen. So let's call it 200 by zero by zero. And this time I'm going to actually draw a rectangle and I want to draw a filled rectangle. So I'm going to go and grab this one and copy and paste it. Now, once again, you can decide on what dimensions you want. Width wise, I think I want to do a five width. Obviously go for odd numbers here because our line is only one width. Okay. Height, uh, let's do three height. Okay. And where do we want it? So X, well, I know it's on 10 X because it's on the same X as the line. And Y, where do I want it? Well, I want it to start at the bottom of my screen. Okay. Now I know the bottom of my line is 54. So I can go and simply go and put a 54 there. But because it's a square, it's going to start from that side. So we need to go and center it. So we're just going to reduce that to eight. Okay, so that's going to shift a little bit to the left, so it should be centered. We can now go and test that again. Spawn it in. We should have a little button on our screen. Yep, and there you go. See why I shifted it from 10 to 8? Is it shifted a little bit to the left? Okay, otherwise it would have started on the line and then gone right. Okay, so now we have this. The next thing we want to do is we want to actually get our inputs from our touch screen, and that's what's going to control this up and down. Now with the touch screen, if we go into composite here, actually you can't see it, but if we go in, we know that our touch screen inputs is, if you press the screen, it gives a on off on channel one. And if depending on where you press the X and where you press the Y, it gives you two number outputs. You can always double check this if you go into your Lua block. And if you go to your help and you scroll down to where you have all this touch screen data, you'll see you have all your dimensions here. So you got the numbers that we want, which is input X, which is number three and input Y, which is number four and the impressed is number one. Now we can use that to actually go and set the height of our little button. The thing is that that thing, that number is going to be always changing. And the problem is that if we go and take that number directly from the screen, what happens when we're not pressing it? When we're not pressing, it doesn't give us anything here. Okay. Which is the problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out of here and we're going to use a memory register. Okay, so a simple memory register. So we can go and find it. There it is. And we can place it down. What we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, where are we pressing on the Y axis on our screen? So that's coming from our composite. And we're going to go and de read that. So let's go and get a read number. Okay, so we're going to read that. And we know that is on channel four. And that number is then going to go to our memory register. That's going to save that number so that every time we press the screen, it saves it. And how we can save it is by using the set. So we're going to go use the is pressed. So we're going to go and do a simple read on and off. And it's going to come from our composite again. And we're going to be reading on channel one. And we're going to go and set that. So every time I press my screen, it remembers where it is on the Y axis. We're then going to feed that back into our little script. And to do that, we'll need a simple write number. And we're going to be writing on, let's do channel, channel 10. Why not? Okay. You can use any channel here. Just don't make sure you don't override the channels that you've already used. So now we're going to feed that composite back into our Lua. But of course you can see it disconnected our touch screen. So we need to make sure we reconnect the touch screen there. And now we can go back into our Lua. I'm going to add a simple option here for it to read what we've just given it. So I'm going to copy and paste this. You don't have to, you can write this in. I'm just using this as my example. I know I'm writing on channel 10 and this is going to be my, let's say my button. Okay. So you can see here button. We're going to take this button and we're going to tell now to draw the rectangle at the button. Okay. That way it's only going to draw the rectangle of where it wants it to draw it at. 
Okay, perfect. We can then press done. Make sure on your memory register, you do set this reset value to the bottom of your line. Now we know that our bottom of our line is 54. So I'm gonna leave it at 54 there. Once we're happy with this, we can update it and we can spawn that in. We should now be able to touch the screen and it should move our bar. There we go, can you see that? It's moving our bar. The only problem is, can you see, I can move it anywhere on the screen. So we actually wanna limit it to where we can actually bring that little button, okay? To do that, we can use a simple clamp. So we're gonna go back into our Lua script and we're gonna go look for a clamp. Perfect. What we're going to do is we're gonna clamp that number that we're getting from our touch screen. Let me just move this out of the way so it's a little bit more easier to read. We're gonna clamp that number and then that number is then gonna to go to our memory register. And we're gonna clamp it between 10 and 54 because that's what we used earlier in our Lua. Remember I said that we need to make sure we remember those dimensions because we'll be using it throughout this video. So we're gonna clamp it between 10 and 54. If we update that now and now go spawn it, you'll notice that wherever I click, so I can use it here and I can move it on the bar. Yeah, that's fine. But if I click too high, it stops at the top of the line and I move it down, it stops at the bottom of the line. Okay, so you can't actually move it higher or lower than the actual line. So that's very useful. The next thing we want to do is, of course, we want to go and limit someone from pressing anywhere on the screen. We only want them to be pressing close to the line because you might have some other buttons, some other things on the screen. So what we can do here is we can go into our Lua scripts and we can start adding some extra things that we have in our example here. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be copying everything that we have from here. So you can see I'm gonna be copying the is pressing rectangle, the output, and also the is point in rectangle. Copy that, go back to our script, go to the top here, delete the end and paste. Okay, so we're gonna paste that all in. You can leave everything else as it is just for now. Now let's go through everything and just figure out how it all works. So what we're going to say that we only want to actually save a number if someone is pressing in between that bar where we've got our little throttle. So we know that our throttle is between these lines here. So we can go to where it says here at the top is point and rectangle. This is checking where, it's, where you're pressing. Okay, and we're going to tell it, okay, if I'm pressing, let's say between seven and let's go let's say seven and let's do eight okay if we're pressing between that so seven on our uh, x and eight on our y and we're going to go all the way down so let's do a width of let's say five and then a height of so seven plus 44 because that is theoretically our length. Actually, let's do a little bit more. Let's do 48, okay? So that's gonna limit it where we can press on the screen, okay? We're then going to output on channel one. Perfect, so we can go here. We know we're outputting on channel one. So I'm gonna go to simple read again. So we're gonna reading that bool, okay? Simple read, just over there. Reading on channel one, and that is then gonna go and set our actual memory so we can get rid of this now fantastic so we're only setting that number if we are pressing within those dimensions that we've just set in the lure block so one thing i have forgotten to do is we need to make sure you add in these three buttons here at the top this will actually go and read where you're pressing on the screen so we're going to go and simply just make a space here at the top and we're going to paste that in once you have that paste in we should be able to now go and update this and we should be able to go see if it actually works. So we can go and let's go and press somewhere else on the screen, nothing happens. Let's go and press close by, and you can see it moves along the bar, okay? Now I gave it a little bit extra at the top and at the bottom, and the reason behind that was so that we could go and press somewhere close to it. You can see if I press a little bit to the side of it, it still works, but if I go like five blocks away, nothing actually happens, okay? So that's why I just give it a little bit of extra breathing room on that. The next thing we want to do is of course we want to go and read the number because that's the whole point of this is to get a throttle, to control throttle with this. So this actually is relatively easy how to do this. So we're going to go back into our actual microcontroller and now we know we've already got a throttle number coming here. 
However, this is going from, uh, let's say this is going from, we know it's going from 54 down to 10. Okay, so we know that because it's going between the line and that's where our Y axis is at the moment. So we're gonna use that and we're gonna convert it into something readable, which is let's say uh, zero to 100. So like a percentage of our throttle. Now you can do that, it's quite easy. So we're going to go and get two function blocks. You could use one function block. I prefer to use two just to make it a little bit easier for this video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that stored number, which is our Y, so between 10 and, 6 and 54, we're going to go into the function block. And we're first going to account for the issue that we're only going from 10 to, to 54. We want it to go from 0 to 44. So we're going to do X minus 10. That's going to then bring us down to a 0 to 44. So it's going to be on a 44 buttons, okay? So we're going to then push that through to the second function block. The second function block, what that's going to do is it's going to take the Y and we're going to go and deduct it from our starting point because the problem is we're going, we're going the opposite direction. At the bottom where zero is meant to be is actually currently 54 or 44. And at the top where zero is, is where we want it to be 100%. So we need to inverse it all the way around. So we know that it's 44. Okay, that's the actual height and we're going to minus it by x okay so that way if we do let's say we do up a little bit three so let's say 44 and then we go up a little bit to like 20 percent throttle it will deduct the 40 let's say 38 and that will only give us a eight or a six etc etc okay so once we have that we can actually put that in brackets and once we have it in brackets, what we're going to do is we're going to simply go and divide it by 44, put that in brackets. Okay, so we're going to get a 0 to 1, and then we're going to times it by 100. Okay, that will give us our percentage. Okay, this is a simple percentage mathematics over there. We can simply go and take that, put that into our inputs, spawn that in, update it, confirm. Now let's go and check our dial. 0, 36%, 64, 84, 100. Let's go to the bottom. It's 2. Let's go a little bit lower. 0. So you guys can see we can actually play with this throttle and do everything we want. Now this is a percentage. If you don't want a percentage, don't add the times 100. Okay, just don't add the times 100 on there. Just leave the divided by 44. And you can see we can do this as much as we want to. We could add another dial, another dial, another dial, another dial, as many as you want to. You can obviously make this look a little prettier by adding a, like a triangle behind this or a rectangle behind this. You could make this light up when you press it if you want to. Um, you could do so many different things here. But this is the very, very basics of it. And hopefully it was quite easy to follow. As I said, once you get the basics in here and the fundamentals of your Lua script, uh, like your line and your button, then it's just simply going and adding a couple extra things that are already found inside the help. Then going back into our actual here and just adding a memory register, adding two function blocks, and it's done. You then have your digital throttle. What I will do is I'll put this up on the workshop and I'll link it in the video description below so that if you guys do want to just download it instead of actually creating it and following the video, you can. Um, I will link that in the video description below. But yeah, you guys let me know uh, what you thought of this video and maybe what you would like to see in a future video. Uh, I think this is a really useful one, especially for creations where you might not have space for, uh, let's say five throttles. You can just put them all in your screen here or instead of using composite and up down this might just be a quicker way of doing it um let me know also if you want to maybe show get me to show you how to connect this up to a seat uh that could be a possibly a solution but yeah hopefully you enjoyed it and uh you'll be using it in some of your creations so i think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and informative as always and we'll see you in the next one